Hi, I'm Lorraine Prokopiu and welcome to the third session of our Women's Wellness series. This third session we're looking at a high intensity workout geared towards perimenopausal, postmenopausal women. When we get to that stage in life we tend to become naturally a little bit more um, insulin resistant. So doing a higher intensity work builds our um, insulin sensitivity. So that's a really important thing to do. We're also working on strengthening all of um, the muscles through the legs to keep those nice and strong, protect our hips. We're gonna think about working, doing some weight bearing through the wrists as well to strengthen all that area, because this is the classic area of falling over and breaking a wrist um, and in this sort of age group. Um, and we're going to be thinking about working into a Tabata type interval training and I'll use my phone here for some um, a timing thing, we'll get to that a bit later on. And the beauty of working with the Reformer, and I'm working today on an Align Pilates A8 Pro Reformer, but the beauty of doing that is that we can become non-weight bearing but we're still doing jumping and getting some lovely resistance in there but there's less stress on the pelvic floor especially a weakening pelvic floor than doing things like jumping jacks on the floor where you've got all that weight going down through the body all right we're going to get started so just a quick word about my setup i've got my straps ready to collect because I'm working with a tower here, I've actually hooked my push-through bar up and out of the way with the safety strap so that I won't hit my head when I jump. I won't slide off the end anyway because the uprights are in the way, so that's all safe. But it's just quite nice to know that that's going to come, not going to come near your head. And I've got the jump board attached down here. And my spring resistance, I'm working with um, two red and one green at the moment. I'm just going to warm up first though on footwork, so no, not straight into jumps at all. So let's start just by sitting onto the bench. I'm just gonna shift my weight from cheek to cheek, just get a center of my sit bones and where they are. And then I'm gonna do a pelvic tilt, rolling the pelvis back into that C shape, into the spine, little kind of cat here, and then heading in the other direction into a cow. Sticking the chest out, sticking the bottom out. Let's keep going, exhale, roll back. Inhale to return. I'm going to do just one more like this, rolling back into that C shape, pulling my tummy muscles in. Inhale to return. And then I'm going to reset through the center, feel nice and upright through the spine. I'm going to just focus into the pelvis a little bit here, drawing the coccyx round into my belly button, tucking the tail, pull those tummy muscles in, and then releasing to a center. So at this point in time, I'm trying to keep my head and shoulders still in space and just move the pelvis. It's quite a small movement, but there's a sense of drawing the tummy muscles in, just getting those abs ready, because they're going to be needed to work to support the weight of the legs. Coming back up into the upright, I'm going to do a spine twist now. So take the opposite hand to the opposite knee and just encourage the twist around, levering through those hands. Reset through the centre, other way. Lengthen through the twist. We're just going to do one more on each side. Reaching and twisting. Trying to keep the length through the spine as you're going, just getting that little bit of mobility through the spine, ready for action. Side bending, I'm going to reach one arm up, side bend over and return. I'm going to keep this arm up and do two more on this side, letting this underneath elbow bend so that I can keep the underneath shoulder away from the ear. I'm just going to go one more here. Return center and then release. We'll do the same on the other side, floating this arm up, sweeping up and over, just feeling that side bend through the waist. I like to get the feeling of lifting my rib cage out of my pelvis as I come into that side bend, really feeling like I'm controlling there, but I'm also getting a nice stretch and opening through that side of the body. Lovely, that was my last one. So we're gonna come down, I'm gonna get going with a little bit of footwork using the um, jump board. So I'm just pivoting around now, lying down on my back. Feet just onto the foot bar here. Just gonna take a moment, feel the thighs kind of dropping into the sockets of the hips. Check into your neutral pelvis. 
So I often have a little blueberry, imaginary blueberry in the small of my back. I'm gonna keep hold of that blueberry, make sure I don't squash it as I just push the carriage up and down. Nice and easy here, feeling the quads working, keeping the pelvis neutral. Just starting to get those legs moving and ready for action to come. And I'm just gonna go for one more. And then I'm gonna push up again and just walk the feet down a little bit because sometimes it's easier just to do that once you're out. And then I'm rising up and down on the feet here onto the toes, rising and release. Rise and release. We'll do two more, rise, release, and one more, rise, release, and then bend the knees and bring it all the way home. Then I'm gonna take the feet out wide and I'm gonna do some plies here. So keeping the pelvis nice and still again, as I'm working my knees and toes over those corners of my jump board. Working the quads, kneecaps pull up the thighs, keeping that pelvis into that neutral position as we're working. And we'll do two more. And then all the way back into the stopper. And then I wanna change the springs up a little bit. So I'll come up into sitting just to do that. I'm gonna drop this uh, one green off now. So I've got two red popping back down onto the carriage. And I'm gonna work a little bit of single leg work here. So coming onto the balls of the feet, just finding that position that you want to onto your jump board. One leg to tabletop, and then just pushing up and down on that single leg. I'm just gonna do two more here. And then I'm gonna take it into a bicycle. So pushing up, reach the free leg out of the, over the foot, top of the foot bar, or the jump board, I should say, as we're working. And I'm gonna go one more. Hold the leg out straight when you get there, and then push the carriage up and reach that leg straight to the ceiling, and then lower it back down again. So we're creating an L shape with the legs, trying to keep the pelvis neutral as the leg lifts. So it doesn't, uh, don't feel like you've got to get your toes to your nose here. The foot just points to the sky. I'm gonna make this one my last one. Stay here, bend the knee, land the foot, and we'll go straight into the other side, tabletop with the leg. So I'm gonna keep this leg tabletop for now as I'm pushing up and down on the single leg. I'm trying to stay on the high half toe here on this standing leg. And then I'm gonna take this into bicycle, so reach the free leg away, controlling back in again. Quads working, abdominals working, just to support the weight of the leg. We go two more. Hold the leg straight, and then we create that L shape here, and then lower back down. So I've got a nice hamstring stretch at the top, control the weight of the leg. And we're gonna use this L shape again a bit later on, so, just remind yourself of what that feels like. Finishing there and then bend that knee, land the toes and then come all the way in. We'll stay on the toes and then we're gonna push the carriage up, land your feet and then bring the carriage back in again. Come up onto the toes, push away, land the, fit, the heels and then bend the knees and come in again. So just keep working through that little kind of cycle with both legs going here. And we're going to get the feel of working through the feet, really heading towards preparation for our jumps now. And then we're gonna flow that. So as you push away, you come onto the toes. As you land, you come onto the heels. As you push away, you come onto the toes. As you land, you come back in onto the heels. So push away, work through the toes, then as you bend the knees, we land. So I want to get the feeling of working through the feet as you're pushing up and down on the jump board there. Because we're gonna need that work through the feet as we're jumping. And then coming back into the stopper. 
Now, in, uh, when you're here onto the reform and we've got the jump board, sometimes you need to take a little moment's rest and you can just rest your heels on the top of your jump board because it's often you feel like there's quite a bit of work just to hold your feet because they just sort of slide down. So it's worth just finding a moment to find that rest point. Then what we're going to do is uh, just lift the headrest, get ourselves ready for jumping. So I'm here, I've got the headrest lifted just because that's going to lift my head and shoulders just the tiniest little bit so I can hold my tummy muscles in and really support the weight of the legs getting ready for jumping. So let's try those jumps now. I'm going to bring the feet back down, headrest is lifted and I'm just going to push up and reach away and come back and then let's go again. So now I'm going to actually take off so I'm driving through the feet, I'm making sure I'm reaching my legs for the landing because otherwise you'd make a serious crash landing if you don't reach for it. So I've got to use my tummy muscles to hold onto the blueberry and at this point in time I'm quite often happy for people to squash the blueberry a bit. <laughs> nice, so I'm going to make this one my last one, there we go. Back to the stopper and again you can take that rest. So we're going to have a little prep up now. We're going to do some jumping jacks next. So I'm just bringing the feet. So I'm going to have the feet together here. I'm going to jump, then separate the feet and land. Jump and separate and bring the feet together. So it's a separate and a together. A separate and a together. I'm just going to do two more here. Finishing off with the feet together. And then I'm going to take a little pause there again. And then the next up was skiing. So I'm going to twist the let knees from side to side. I'm sort of imagining I'm doing moguls right now. So I'm taking my knees to one corner and then to the other corner. And just allowing the pelvis to go with that. And I'm just going to do one more on each side. And then I'll rest in the middle. Woo. Right, now for the real work. So what I'm going to do is set up my little timer here. And as I say, this is a Tabata and I've just gone for um, a standard round with my Tabata of um, 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So I've just got a, um, it's just like a free Tabata timer app that I've used here. Um, uh, you could use some music or you could just use a timer or just take some counts. It's just an option, a way of doing your interval training. So I'm going to hit the play. This is going to be a 10 seconds countdown for me to get into position. It's going to be give me a whistle to go. And I'm going to do jumping jacks. So I've got 20 seconds of jumping jacks. So I'm holding my tummy muscle in. I'm nice and strong through the centre. Controlling these. And then it will give me a countdown. And a stop. There we go. So for, for this one, we get a whistle to start and a bell to stop. Round two, I'm going to do the uh, ski jumps. So again, allow that twist to happen. Feet and knees towards that top corner. Controlling through the waist. Letting that top hip lift a little and then finish on the bell. Take your 10 seconds rest. And then our next round is coming. Jumping jacks again, next round. So we keep alternating between these two. So we've got jumping jacks and then skis. Trying to land nice and softly through the feet. And I'll take my rest there. And then skis. Here we go. Zipping up through the middle, really trying to control that landing. I can feel my legs working quite hard already. But the beauty of this, I'm getting that jump. There we go, rest. All right, we've got the jumping jacks again. Here we go.
The beauty of working here is that I'm not putting loads of pressure onto my pelvic floor as I'm doing my jumps, but I can still get the jumping jacks, I can still get the power through the legs. Nice. And then we've got the ski jumps. You can hear me starting to breathe hard now as well. One more round to go. So just take your rest and enjoy it. My legs are starting to shake. Here we go, jumping jacks. Glad to hear the bell then. Right, last one, ski jumps. Let's go. That's strong through the centre, feeling the twist through the waist. And land. And rest, giving those legs a nice, easy shake off. And then we're gonna come around into sitting. Good. So I'm gonna drop this down now uh, to a single red um, and do a, a single thigh stretch here to stretch off those thighs. I feel like they've really worked. So I'm gonna come into kneeling. I'm gonna stay kind of over this side my, my left side of the reformer here because I'm going to put my left foot onto the silver runner here, hold on to the uh, jump board and just push out into that kind of splits position and then release. Now I'm enjoying the stretch, especially in the quads on that kneeling thigh. It feels really nice. Lengthening, controlling, pushing away. And then return. And I'm just going to hold here, put my left hand, left hip, and then the right arm's gonna reach to the sky. And I'm just feeling that lovely reach from the kneeling knee to the reaching hand. Quads, um, hip flexor stretch. Release, let's go ahead, do the other side. So switching over, placing the foot on, and then again, pushing out into the splits, feeling, and return. So the aim of the game here is to find that stretch back of the front leg, front of this kneeling thigh. Good, just gonna take one more here, enjoying that stretch, as I say, after all that jumping. Returning, hold, right hand, right hip, left hand reaches to the sky. So I've got a sense of stretch from the kneeling knee to the reaching hand. And then I'm gonna release that back down. I'm going to do um, some single leg hopping now. Um, and so I'm going to take this down to, um, or oh, well, I'll take it up actually very slightly to a single green. So I'm going to take this red off now. So I've just got one green on. So I'm going to lie down on my back. I'm wondering whether to start my timer straight away. I think perhaps I will. So I'm going to take some hops. Let's do that. We'll start that timer there. There we go. Give me 10 seconds to get down. And I'm going to go one leg into a tabletop position and I'm just going to hop here. I'm off, starting before the bell, look. Drawing in through those tummy muscles as I work the hop. So it's just like your single leg action, but I'm just hopping here. Then taking a little rest. Getting ready for the other leg. So we've got 20 seconds on the other leg. Here we go, pushing up. Good. 
Then I'm gonna come back in and then I'm gonna hop from leg to leg. So tabletop, wait for my whistle and then I switch and switch in the air, switch in the air. So I've changed my Tabata here in that I'm doing, I'm gonna do four different sets of exercises and I do that twice through. So I'm gonna take a rest. So my fourth round is gonna be like a running. So I'm gonna push up half the way, hold, and then I'm gonna switch legs and I'm trying to keep the carriage still. And I'm just running through my feet here, trying to control through the feet. So trying not to be too hard into the jump board. Trying to keep the carriage as still as I can as I do this fast feet. All the way back in, take a rest. Ready for hopping, so we start that whole lot again. We're gonna hop on one leg. <laughs> Watch that crash landing. Right, let's try the other leg. Here we go. Tabletop, reset. And away we go. So using your tummy muscles, supporting the weight of the leg, strong through your center, controlling your landing. Remember, always reach for that landing. Then we're gonna hop from leg to leg. It's our next round. So the carriage moves, gliding up and down. And there's a little bit of extra work through the tummy muscles as you switch the legs as well. I don't know if you may have noticed that. <laughs> Take a rest. Good. All right, so we've got that sort of fast feet running up here. And then we switch. So on this one, still got the switch of the legs, but I'm trying to do it at speed and I'm trying to keep the carriage still. Make sure there's a bit of knee bend as you land, otherwise you want to you feel like you're really locking your knees out. Nice. All the way back to the stopper and pause there. Good. So you can see on that round, I did four different exercises and went through. And the other round, I did one exercise, a second exercise, and then alternated. So that's mess, things you can play around with there. All right, I'm going to do um, some feet in straps. I'm just gonna add a blue spring for that and then come on down. So I've got, I've got a green and a blue here. I'm going to pivot down onto my back, taking hold of the straps, pressing up part of the way. Oh, I see I'm twisted, so let me untwist that. There we go, grab that strap again. Good, we're there, all organised. Down we come. All right, so feet in straps, pushing up part of the way, one foot in, two feet in, good. I'm just gonna lift and lower here. Just getting a sense of control through the hamstrings and then press away. And we'll just do a couple more here, lift and a lower and a lift and a lower. I'm going to lift and hold and just take it into an adductor stretch. So just taking the legs out wide and I'm just going to take a little baby pulse here just to enjoy that stretch. Checking the pelvis is neutral. Legs come back up. We'll just do some circles. So pressing down, out and around, up together and then keep that coming. We're just going to do two more. Keeping your pelvis neutral. Nice movement through the hips. And then we reverse, legs out, around together. 
Just again, kind of feel loose through the hips, stabilize through the pelvis, controlling through the backs of the thighs and the glutes. One more. And then we're gonna come out of the straps. So bending the knees, coming back in. I'll just let those straps drop down for now. We're not gonna be using them again. And then I'm gonna come up and we're gonna do a version of the 100. Again, another jump, well, hops, and we're working the 100. So, where am I? I am going to go back to that one green, because that works quite nicely for me for the hops. Back down for my timer. I'll talk you through it as we go. So you're gonna bring one leg into your tabletop position. We'll stay hopping on that one leg. You're gonna reach the arms long. We inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Keep that coming. Strong through the tummy muscles. So you can really think about using that exhale to press the belly in. Almost squash your blueberry if you need to. See if I can get one more in there, there we go. Rest, same, same, other leg. So it's 100, but not quite. Here we go. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. It's tough to get your three pumps in on the hop, but try working it if you can. It's a great challenge on the coordination. Now, we're gonna try the jumps with the L shape for this next round. So, jump off both feet, reach to an L, land on two feet. Jump off, reach to an L, land. This is really tough through your tummy muscles. You've got to do this quite quick. And I'm strong through the center as I'm reaching my legs up. It's quite tough. So your option would be just to pull the knee into the chest. There we go, how's that for timing? Release, coming back down. We're gonna try the 100 with both legs. Here we go, arms long. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Nice, if I've got to do all of that again, that's good. Once I've done each one, it's off, it's done. Hops first, back to the 100. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three. Ready for the other leg. <laughs> Reset. Float the arms up. Inhale, two, three. Right, L jumps. So nice and strong through the legs. Take off with both feet. One leg reaches into the air, land with both feet. And as I say, you can always do a knee bend if that's better for you. Try the straight leg. But waving the legs in the air like you just don't care means it's stronger on your tummy muscles, so control it. Oh, there we go. Last round, both legs hop. If you don't like that, try the single legs. So both legs jump, I should say, shouldn't I? So almost get a sense of squashing your blueberry as you reach the legs away, really to control through the back. So any vulnerability in the back, we go back to a single leg. <laughs> or you take a rest if you need to there we go Whee! thank goodness for that all right we come back up into a sitting position and take a breath there 
Okay, so I'm going to work a real, real active rest now. I'm going to drop down to a yellow spring here. So I'm going to take that green off and I'm just a light yellow. And then I'm going to come into kneeling. So remember, it is a light yellow, so the carriage will move easy to control. I'm going to come down, bring my knees, uh, my feet back against the shoulder rest. And then I'm just going to push away a little bit and place my hands on the silver runners. So I'm trying to get into that four point kneeling position here. Arms are vertical, thighs are vertical. I'm just gonna hold that upper body position as I push the carriage away, find a half plank, and then return back to that four point kneeling position. So I'm trying to keep my pelvis pretty still in space as I'm moving the carriage with the thighs, checking into my tummy muscles as I'm working, especially as I come out here with the lighter spring, it makes it a bit tougher. Here comes the change, push the carriage away and hold. We're gonna do some press ups. So just bend the elbows and then return. We're just doing three. Take your time, enjoy them. And here's one more. And press up, then we'll put the two together. So bring the carriage in, press away, hold your half plank, press up and return, pull the carriage in, press away, hold your half plank, press up, return, one more round, in, half plank, press up, and return. Then from here, we're gonna work some knee stretches. So we're controlling again, pull the carriage in towards the wrist, but don't run them over and then return. Maybe you go slightly away from the vertical position. Pull in and return. Again, I'm trying to keep my sit bones, my pelvis pretty still in space. And as the knees come in and underneath me, I'm smiling my sit bones out behind me. I'm gonna to start to pick up the pace a little bit, focusing in on this in, but I need to stop just before I hit my wrists. That won't be pleasant. Four, three, two, and one. And then returning nice and slowly. Don't run over your own wrist to let yourself come all the way back up into the upright position. Nice, I'm gonna grab my ball, my purple ball over here. So this is just a um, one of these small squashy balls and I'm just gonna use it to pop my pelvis on. I'm just gonna show you these jumps first and then we'll add in some of the, the, go back to the Tabata counter. So I'm coming forwards a little bit more. So my knees are sort of close-ish to this edge, edge of the uh, carriage. I'm gonna put the ball between my ankles and drop my bottom back there. So it's kind of works as somewhere to put your bottom and to remind your bottom to stay back here because I want a lot of weight back into my, my knees and my feet. You can have your feet like this or like this, whatever works best for you. I prefer this, so I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna put your hands onto the jump board, fingertips kind of pointing forwards in a diagonal and then just push away and back in and just see what that feels like. Working your center to keep your back long and straight. Keeping your bottom just touching the ball. You could think about keeping the ball as ball shaped as you could. And then try a little jump here. So I'm gonna push away. It's light spring, so I've got a little bit of a longer time to return for the landing. And then we can try some single arms. So I'm gonna put one hand down, just holding onto the reformer there, the carriage and then just push away with that single hand. Again, there's quite a lot of cool work going on here to stabilize. Try the other arm. These are all little taste tests, just preparing yourself for the work to come. And then we're gonna start cycling around, working out a batter again. So let's just see if I can set that up. Or can I just hit the button? I think I can, here we go. So, Pelvis back onto the ball, hands on here. We're jumping, both hands, chest press. Tummy muscles in, here we go. Driving up, controlling that landing. Driving up, controlling the landing. Good. So you could work with a slightly stronger spring because you can see I've got quite a float going on here. And I've got to use my tummy muscles 
to control that. Land and hold. So we're gonna do one arm next round. You choose which arm you do. I'm doing my right. Reset, tummy muscles connected. Oh, I'm off before the bell or the whistle. <laughs> Let's go. Good. Controlling through the arms as we're working. Nice. Nice and strong through the center. Pushing through the fingers. Let's do one more. Finishing at the bell there, good. All right, then we do the other side, reset. I'm gonna take a little pause, rest on my ball. Reset, here we go. Pushing away. So really trying to feel like you're controlling the shoulder as well as you land here. We're getting this lovely weight bearing through the wrist, but it's all under control here. Nice and strong through the center and a pause there, good. We're gonna go back to the two, two arm jump again. Just taking a little rest in the upright position. Reset, and then away we go. Nice and strong through the center as I'm pushing out. A rest. So arm number one again, which is right. And this time we just take the arm out to the other arm out to the side a little bit and see how that goes. So you could, if you don't like that, have that hand back down again if it feels okay. It's a little more challenging on the balance because I haven't got that fixed point. Nice, let's try the other side. My quads are working hard as well, just holding me back here. So take a little rest in between. Reset, other arm. Free arm is just reaching out. Pulling in through the tummy, nice and strong here. And I'm gonna land. I'm gonna do another round with both hands again. Uh, taking a moment to reset, here we go. Drawing through those tummy muscles, pressing away. So think wide collarbones, control through the whole of the arm as you get your landing going on there. Right through to the shoulders and the chest. Take a rest. Right, one more round. We're gonna alternate arms on this final round. So here we go. I'm gonna go right arm first, left arm out to the side, push, switch, and reach. Push, switch, reach for the landing. Push, switch, reach for the landing. Keep that coming. Control through the center. Quads are working just to hold you here. And that's done, well done. All right, so coming up, or oh, just holding this upright position here, pulling the pubic bone up your nose. I'm gonna lift the arms and just feel open through the front of those hips. They've been held in that uh, sort of deep knee bend position for a little while, so it's nice to change that. And then I'm gonna take this ball out, pivot around. I'm gonna do a kneeling mermaid here. And this is nice with a very light spring. This side knee, uh, the knee nearest the jump board is quite close to that yellow spring, uh, to the springs I should say. So I'm gonna put the ball between my knees to root down through the knees, hand just slightly in front of the shoulders, sweeping the outside arm up and then side bend over and then return. So I'm trying to keep the ball that's between my knees still. So I come up and over. Great, let's do one more here. And then I'm gonna add a little change. So I'm gonna come up and over and hold. Then I'm very gently gonna try and put, let the carriage come in a little bit. So now the ball rolls slightly between my knees and I'm trying to deepen the side flexion as I bring the carriage in with my knees. Return, bring it all the way back up and over. 
We're going to switch around and do the other side. Can I do this keeping the ball between my knees? Oh yes, look, I can, just about. Carriage moves easy on a yellow spring, remember, as you pivot around and change sides, so be careful. Sweeping the arm up and over, holding that ball still between my knees to keep the pelvis still, and I'm just side bending from the rib cage above that, up and over. So we're gonna do that little change. We come up and over and hold the side bend. Then I'm gonna deepen it from underneath the waist this time. So I'm pulling the carriage in by moving my knees and then a return, pulling in and a return. And you'll notice the ball rolls the tiniest little bit between my thighs and then return. And then we come all the way back up again and release. And then we're gonna get rid of that ball come on off the reformer and I'm going to pop the ball away. Excellent. So we're pretty much done with the reformer now and we're going to head over and work the suspension trainer. So I'm going to scoot around here and then I'm going to reorganize my mat to come into a diagonal line underneath the suspension trainer, which should work about there, I think. Let's give that a whirl. And then we'll hook the suspension trainer underneath. And we're just gonna have a little feeling of these first two exercises before we take it into the Tabata version. So I'm going to stand vertical. I'm gonna keep some tension through the straps and just lift my arms up to a nice Y position here. So we're doing Ys and T, so a Ys are first. And we drop the body back into that sort of uh, drop back <laughs> straight line though straight diagonal line and then work to pull yourself back up again so just have a couple of goes here feeling the work through the shoulders we're trying to work the back of the body here and um, all, all the way around the back of the shoulders as well trying to get some of those ex back extensors working as we're controlling up and down and back extensors are quite important here with this age group as we want to try and keep the body upright because we tend to get quite rounded as we age. So that's exercise number one. I'm gonna switch around. I kind of switch and take the straps behind me. And again, we're up into this upright position. Arms are out in front. So now I'm gonna take this into a T. I'm gonna drop my body weight forwards as the arms come out. And as you do this, you can allow your heels to lift off. They might stay down, they might not, it doesn't matter. We're working the chest here, but again, we're trying to keep the back nice and straight and strong as we're working. Great, so now you've got the idea of those two exercises. I'm gonna take this into our Tabata round here. So let's work, let's get that going. Switching on, so. We're going to lift the arms up to the Y first, nice straight through the body. There's my three second countdown and I'm just working back and return. And we'll keep that coming nice and strong through the back of the body, controlling back and just kind of looking directly forwards, just out on the horizon as you're working here so that you're keeping the neck in a good position. There we go, that's my last one there. I'm gonna switch around, bring it out into this forward position. And then we're just working those flies here, taking the arms out and press back. Out and press back. Now, if I want to work a little bit harder, I can take it back into more of this half plank position and work here. So you choose, have a little play. All right, switching around. So I'm just doing this round, I'm working this alternating pattern. So nice and upright again. And then we tip back and pull up. Really feeling like you're working all the way around the shoulders, nice and strong, working those arms. Now working the grip as well. And grip is quite important. It's a sign of longevity if you've got good grip. Nice, release, let's switch. Here we go again for our T's. Whoops, making sure we've got those straps, not twisted, out into your flies. 
So keeping the tension throughout the suspension trainer throughout, and you want to make sure it doesn't scrape on the shoulders at all as well as you're working here. Really switching around. Go up into the Y and dropping back and a return. Feeling like you're working the shoulders. This is this is a little bit more a sense of superset here rather than a real high intensity in terms of just strengthening through the muscles and the shoulders, but it's quite nice using the Tabata as a countdown for you and a way to work around through those exercises. Here we go. Out into the chest press, or flies really, if we're thinking of the gym. Keeping the tension through the band. And again, you've got to keep the tension through your torso so you don't sag in the middle. So there's a little core work going on there throughout. Nice final round of each. Up into the Y. Here we go. Bringing the hands forwards as you drop back. Return to your Y. Nice and strong all the way around the shoulders. Try and keep the elbows pretty straight as you work. I'm trying to drop, even though the hands are lifted, I'm trying to keep my armpits dropping. So I've got a beautiful long neck. Last one. Awesome. All right, around we go. Flies. Reaching the hands forwards. Open into that half plank or plank and return. Suspended plank, can we call it that? Nice, strong through the torso. Feeling the back nice and straight. Last one there. Great. Okay, so we're going to come down on to the mat now and we're gonna work, we're gonna do some mountain climbers and some fun stuff here. So here we go, sitting down. So I want to come on to all fours with my feet in the loop. So there's a little bit of um, working out what I'm doing here. So I've got hold of the loops in their respective hands and I'm making sure I've got no crisscross here because I don't want any scraping of the webbing there. And then I'm going to take my right foot into the left loop here and then I'm gonna bring this left foot over and hook it into the other one. And then I'm gonna pivot around and come onto all fours. Can take a little bit of practice getting into that, but once you've got it, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> now I'm here and I'm gonna hit my start and we're just gonna go straight for it for this one. Here we go. So I'm gonna take some weight through the hands, take the body weight forwards. I'm gonna lift my knees off and then I'm gonna work a little mountain climber action. Nice and strong through the center, pushing down through the arms. Drawing in through the tummy muscles, it's strong through the center. And I'm taking a rest there. And release those wrists off, give them a little shake. Round two, we're gonna pull both knees in at the same time. Push down through the hands, pull forwards, pull and pull. A bit like we did on the reformer. So no need to go back too far. Think about pulling it in with your tummy muscles. I'm always thinking about cat here. Oh, strong through the thighs as well. Getting out of breath now. <laughs> and then release. So this we're working definitely into the higher intensity work as we go. I'm going to take that round again, just set myself up, off we go. I'm stopping talking because I'm focusing in on my core. Taking a rest, I need to come back just a slightly bit closer to my attachment. I'm just gonna show you if it's struggle, if you struggle a little bit with the wrists, you can work down onto the elbows, pushing in, and then just pushing, uh, 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 pull the knees in, take a rest. Push down, pull the knees in, 
take a rest. So you can take this as an active rest in this round, or you can work here if that's better on your wrists. Personally, I find that because it's a little bit lower, I find that a little bit tougher in my back. So I think I prefer to be up onto my hands. I'm gonna take that now. Here we go. Strong through the arms, running through those legs. Nice and strong through the abs. <laughs> I think I'm stopping just before my bell, aren't I? Give those wrists a bit of a shake off. Woo. Both knees are coming in. Here we go. Strong through the center, pulling the knees in. I'm looking at the counter now. And take a rest. All right, we have got two more rounds. We can do it. Give those wrists a bit of a shake off. <laughs> Pulling the knees in. Really strong through the arms. Find your centre. Be good to know that this is our final round. Final, final, knees to chest, we can do it. Pushing down, strong through the arms, draw your tummy muscles in, here we go. Pull, pull, pull. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear my breathing getting harder and harder. Uh, nearly there. Uh, hey, thank goodness for that. Rest those legs off. Ooh, come on up. Oh, you can see the sweat marks on my hands on the mat. Give those hands a bit of a shake off. Nice job. <laughs> come on down onto all fours. Just take a drop back into your shell stretch. Oh, reach the hands forward. That was our very last and final Tabata round there. Release, take your right hand over to your left. Pressing back, side stretch. Hey, other side. Nice return. Come on up. We'll take. I'm going to turn just sideways here, and then we'll take um, one leg forwards. There it is. Tuck the tail. Feel that stretch through the kneeling knee. Bit of a thigh stretch here. We work the quads a lot. Scoot that foot forwards, stick your bottom out, <laughs> find your balance, reaching, feel the stretch through the hamstrings. And then we're just gonna work between the, bending the knee, straighten the knee. A Little bit of quad stretch, a little bit of hamstring stretch, letting the breathing come back to a normal size breath. Good. And then we'll finish with a hamstring stretch here, dropping back, stick your bottom out, Shine your breastbone light beyond your foot. I like to put the hands on the hips. Some people would like to come down here, but I think it quite often rounds the back. So we're going to stay here. And then release. And then we'll switch legs. So bringing the other leg forwards. Hold here, tuck the tail. Feel that stretch through the kneeling thigh. And then we'll walk the front foot forwards a little bit. Straighten that leg, stick your bottom out for a bit of a hamstring stretch. And then we're gonna rock forwards and backwards, just kind of moving between those two postures. <laughs> Feeling the stretch onto the front of the thigh, stretch on the back. Hold back when you next get there. Lift the toes if that's okay for you. Pull the hip back into the socket, reach that sit bone behind you, breastbone light goes forward. Find the length through the spine as you're working there. Great, release. Bring that foot underneath, tuck the back toe, drive up into a standing position and reset. We'll come all the way up into standing and just do a little upper body stretch. So take the hands behind you and just place them on your bottom. <laughs> Use that to keep your tail tucked underneath you 
and then think about drawing your shoulder blades towards each other a little bit, elbows towards each other and feel that chest stretch. Keep your breastbone and your pubic bone connected so that you're not lifting the breastbone too much. It becomes a real shoulder stretch, chest stretch. Release, bring the hands out. Bring them out in front of you, palms are touching, just reach the hands away and look down between your biceps. Try and stretch the shoulders at the back of the body. Release down, bring the arms up and out and around. We're gonna do that again. This time take the hands behind the line of the body, stretching through the chest. We're gonna do one more of those. So just take that as big as you feel able to go, finding the stretch through the shoulders. Bring the arms up above the head. Let the armpits drop, just relax. And then sweep those arms out and around and release the shoulders. I'm feeling strong and worked out in a really safe way today. So no extra pressure on the pelvic floor at all. Nice and strong work though, well done.